working today out at our six acre spot and doing some tree, some small scale tree felling work, basically some successional direction work um, right behind me here. In this context, I just felled this Norway maple uh, to process into firewood. I wanted to talk a little bit around what this idea is. Like, why would I want to cut that tree down right there? Why would I want to cut it at that weird height? What about this tree right here? This is a peach tree that's passing away. Why am I not excited, but why am I really open to the idea of this peach passing away? I want to chat about all of that in this video, so stick around. First things first is I'm not a person who loves felling trees. I, it's compelling, it's interesting sometimes, but it's not like, oh, I'm just looking for an excuse to get out there and cut. But this is a tree, this is a Norway maple that is a seedling that showed up a number of years ago, a, years ago, um, and grew extremely vigorously right in this position. Let me get us oriented here. So this tree, uh, which will come back, and I want to talk about that and why it's cut at the height that it is. Uh, this tree is to the south of a couple of really uh, high value guilds, in my opinion. There's one here that has an apple, a persimmon, a pawpaw, some white and red currants, some rhubarb, some comfrey, some garlic, and some other characters. And it is just to the west of and south of a peach and pawpaw guild. And so it was actually, maple casts a very significant amount of shade. In fact, I'll stand right where the stem was. I could have done well to show a before. But here is looking due south. It's a cloudy day, but you can see the sun is over there. And so the maple during the growing season would occupy a significant amount of this canopy, which had a negative influence, and an increasingly negative influence on the ability of these other characters to thrive. So in a way, that design decision is fairly straightforward. A tree leaning to the south, putting a significant amount of shade onto fruiting, plants just to the north um, makes sense to cut down. We heat with firewood and Norway maple, yeah, that's okay, it's not the best in the world. If we were organized and we had mushroom spawn, maybe some shiitake varieties that do well on Norway maple, we would organize and do it that way. Some of these could be nice mushroom growing bolts. Um, this debris on the top could be turned into biochar, but we'll probably actually weave it into our brush wall to fortify where deer are coming and going, and let that be a place for birds to land. And then the rest is firewood that's really straightforward, using an electric chainsaw with uh, uh, vegetable oil as my lubricant makes it pretty comfortable and easy to do this work. This stump being cut like this, it's a weird height. You can see how much vigor there was in the growth with this. I suspect, well, there's starting to be some issues in the interior. Norway maple tends to do that. So this tree may not be super long for this world anyway. But by cutting it here, we're pollarding it. It's a low pollard, and that is the idea is cutting the tree when it's dormant to encourage re-sprout that will allow it to regrow in a more manageable way. It holds the option of tapping this if we wanted to try to harvest some maple sap for drinking, probably not enough for making syrup, but it allows this trunk of this to still be a harvestable uh, material and keeps the roots intact and encourages or gives the option for it to re-sprout, but to sprout below these other plants so that it does not uh, create competition and reduce their vigor. Just to give an example of pollarding, this is a much larger scale one but it can show you what's going on here. This was a curly willow uh, that had grown very, very tall and pretty geriatric. You can see it was starting to break down under the bark. Uh, and I went through with Juan, my friend Juan, and we cut in a few spots here. Um, you can see this is all regrowth that is now more, uh, much more manageable to do with hand tools. We can come out with a handsaw. This is all oyster mushroom, which is crazy. So this pollard, as this tree slowly declines, um, is producing food. It's explicitly producing food in the form of mushrooms. And then we can also come through and take cuttings from these and stick them in the ground and root them, which we did in this case. So when we pollarded the willow, we stuck cuttings in the ground in order to expand it. So pollarding, it's not necessarily a destructive act. In this case, this willow is passing away, but the cuttings are doing their thing, but I digress. So here we have this single tree felled. It'll generate a bit of firewood, could have generated mushroom logs and been uh, transformed into shiitake, created some brush. 
but most importantly, it liberated more light. This apple tree right here is starting to get a little bit weary with how much light competition it was dealing with. And so I think this liberation is gonna help produce a bunch more fruit. I still need to go in and cut out some water sprouts and suckers, kind of tidy up and bring the canopy down on the apple. But that lack of maple casting shade is gonna be really helpful. And in some ways, I would say maybe most importantly, just because it's a unique character in this landscape, these are pawpaw trees that have been here now for 10 plus years. You can see, um, if you're familiar with pawpaw, you would know. Let's see if I can get that to focus, maybe. These big swollen buds are all flower buds. We'll see what the season brings. But basically, these are now very much bearing age pawpaws. You can see they've been expanding and thicket forming. When they're very young, they like a nice amount of shade. And this maple offered that. And now as they're getting older and they're starting to really want to accumulate sun energy and turn it into massive sugary, fatty, bombadils of candy in October, they want a lot more light. And so that cut is going to help these flowers transform into huge goobers in the fall that we can enjoy but also collect seed from for our nursery. Big win for this one cut. And then onto this peach, which is just to the south of the pawpaw. And I've spoken about this in greater detail in another video. A guild design that uh, bakes into the initial planting, so a peach to the south of a pawpaw to the north, a few feet away, no, no particular prescription, this happens to be about two feet. Um, peach grows very, very quickly, loves the full light, then tends to get diseasy, which is the technical term, <laughs> I'm sure. But this tree is starting to get some gamosis and uh, leaf curl, all the things that peaches get. And now this pawpaw just to the north of it is old enough and desiring all of that light that this peach can pass away. We'll give it a little bit of time. We'll see if the maple leaving, does this peach have another rebound and another year or two? I suspect it's in the home stretch of dying. And then we can harvest that dead wood for firewood. Uh, Juan is making um, knives and spoons and all sorts of other fun stuff out of persimmon and different plants in this landscape. So maybe peach and apricot and persimmon and pear will be turned into bowls and spoons as the tree passes away. But for now, we'll just cut out dead branches as they reveal as being dead. And slowly but surely, we can celebrate the pawpaw becoming the actual canopy in this space. I thought there'd be some value in sharing some of the layers of thought that go into tree felling, that it's not just, oh, let me just cut that and that and that, let's just cut all the trees. It's, hey, let's let this maple grow for a while. Huge, beautiful root system under there, lots of leaves deposited on the ground. Uh, the invitation for the maple to re-sprout from the top in the pollarding cut that was made. We may need to make it a little bit more of a slanted cut to shed water. Uh, but there's a harvest of firewood, there's a brush wall material for birds uh, to make nests, and liberation of light for all these other plants. So having trees planted in the landscape, this could very well have been a honey locust or a black locust that we planted explicitly. It happened to be a seedling that showed up, but the functionality is the same. Who are the early succession, very fast moving canopy establishing trees and shrubs that you can put into a landscape that can then be chopped to liberate both nutrient and light for other characters that are here for the long haul. And then within that, the peach being a decaying, declining, successional character to liberate light for the pawpaw. So maybe at some point now that this has opened up, we'll think about, can there be some honey berries that go in there? Can there be some more current varietals? There's a lot more light, a lot more opportunity. But for now, I'm just gonna clean up the firewood and get on to the next thing. It's time to prune apples and pears before we get back into shipping. Feel free in the comments, let me know what sort of questions you have that come up or concerns if you have them. Uh, some design additions that I'm missing that could be happening in here. And what sort of trees are you working with in your landscape where you're uh, choosing successional arcs, you're, you're interacting, you're choosing for things to either pass away or be suppressed or knocked back and then rebound later on. Uh, what does that look like? Who are the characters you're working with? What are the designs you're experimenting with? Um, have you integrated pawpaws and persimmons as understory characters to grow in the competition of the shade and then liberated them? How did they respond 
if we don't get frozen out, if we don't have bud destruction from a, a deep freeze in May, uh, the pawpaws should be able to produce two to three times more fruit than they did last year. And I would like that very much. Anyway, that's my little spiel on cutting a tree. Thanks for watching.